Mac Power Users, episode 621, Sparky Freedom. Hello and welcome to Mac Power Users and Happy New Year. My name is Stephen Hackett and I'm joined as always by my friend and yours, Mr. David Sparks. Hey Stephen, how are you today? I am great. I've been looking forward to this episode for quite a while. We're going to get into this, but it's it's a it's a great way to start the year together. Yeah, happy new year. Happy new year. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I, I'm always it. ready for a new year. Yeah, we got through that last one. Let's have a good one this time. That works for me. Yeah. So, um, got some changes <laughs> in my life, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. This is a, this is both a really easy and a really hard one to get into. Uh, I want to I want to start with a story. How about that? Okay, and then we'll get into it. All right. So some people know this story. I think we answered this on MPU five hundred. I think what man that feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. One of the a questions, different world. <laughs> quite literally, uh, one of the questions in that live show was how you and I first met, and you know, we met on the internet. We our site sort of came up around you were right, I think, before me, but our sites are they're of the same generation, they're this of the same era of sort of Mac and Apple focused blogging. But yeah. where I count our friendship starting is at Macworld 2011. And we had ice cream together the last day, and we just kind of talked about life and work on the internet and this sort of strange world we were in. And that has evolved now you know, over the last decade to, to where we are now, you were an instrumental voice in me quitting my job six years ago. Uh, yeah, you, I remember that sitting <laughs> at that tea shop with you and Jason Snow. Yeah. That's right. You literally cornered yeah. me in a tea shop. And, uh, yeah. and so for me, it's just a real honor to get to talk about this with what you're doing, because I feel like it's really full circle. Like this is sort of, Okay, it's 10 years later. I can't eat ice cream anymore because my body now rejects dairy. But, you know, I've got some dairy-free ice cream and you have real ice cream. And we're sort of uh, regrouping 10 years later. And so I I feel really privileged that I get to be the one to have this conversation with you about these changes you're making in your business and in, and in your life. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, um, it's been a crazy three months. And keeping this... Uh, close to the chest and not sharing it with the audience has actually been kind of difficult for me, but <laughs> we yeah. had to talk around things a couple of times. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing? I am, as we, uh, as this show publishes, I am no longer a lawyer. Woo. I feel like I should ring the bell. There we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it's crazy, man. I, uh, I've been thinking a lot about my life and what I do, and I guess we can kind of get into it here, but the the short version is I want to give all of my time and attention to what I do as Max Sparky, and I decided that um, I was going to take that shot, and about three months ago, I started notifying my clients, and as of today, I am no longer practicing law, and I'm doing Max Sparky full-time. Let me start by saying and giving my deepest congratulations to you. Uh, you know, your path to sort of being an independent content creator is really different than almost anybody else in our circle because even though you left like the nine to five a long time ago, you held on to clients and you had your own independent firm. And and so you've kind of had this like two-step process toward this, which I I just find I find it really interesting. And I remember when you were going to leave your your previous firm and all the decision making and conversations that went into that and and now this is sort of the other side of that coin and it it's so exciting to see and I, I really I couldn't be happier for you. Um, it's been a real joy the last couple of months to be able to walk with you on this process. So thank you for for letting me <laughs> letting me do that. So where do you where do you want to start? Oh man, I, you know, it, I'll tell, I'll start by saying this is all as big of a surprise to me as it probably is to some of the listeners. I, I did not expect to ever stop practicing law. You know, um, uh, if you look at the studies, most attorneys are miserable. I mean, it's like, it's scary. The percentages of people practicing law that hate it. 
that was never me, you know. Um, by leaving the firm, I was able to scale back the practice. I've talked in the show how I kind of stopped doing trial work because it just takes so much time and mainly focused on transactional law with with my little, you know, stable of clients. But um, Stephen knows from behind the scenes that um, I am, you know, when you're a lawyer, it's like being a fireman, you know, and mm-hmm. and you just never know when you're going to get a call or a... Um, you know, an email that's going to require you to jump into action to help somebody, you know, put out a fire. And Do you slide down a pole when you get an email from a legal client? I wish, man. That'd I, be so I, might cool. have, I might have stayed with the, the law practice <laughs> if I had a pole I could slide down. <laughs> but, you know, it is, uh, it is something that's been increasingly, you know, on my mind as I try to deal with that. And I feel like, you know... The stuff I do with Max Barkey makes a difference. And and the lawyer stuff does too. But, I mean, I really, really want to work on my thing. And mm-hmm. it's really hard when you just never know when you're going to get interrupted or have a series of interruptions. And, you know, each client is its own little domain. So sometimes the fire bell goes off for three fires at the same yeah. time. And, yeah. um you know, I realized that the last time I had complete control of my schedule was 1992, <laughs> you know, really. I mean, so, so, I mean, but that, that's not really how I got there. I, I, the, the way I got there was kind of interesting. Um, uh, I have always thought I could walk the line of doing both things at once. And I, I probably could have continued to do it, but I started to think about, you know, you know, what the cost was of doing two things, you know, and, you know, there have been times where uh, the show suffered because I had to deal with the client problem the day before we recorded and I didn't get to put as much prep time as I wanted. And there have been times where clients have suffered because I was recording the show when they had something blowing up. Mm -hmm. And I just started to increasingly become dissatisfied with those compromises. And, um, one of the smartest things I did was a couple of years ago, I got involved with a group of friends that make things for the internet. We call ourselves the creators guild. It's kind of like, you know, have you heard of these mastermind groups? Sure. Yeah. I, I hate that word so much. I mean, <laughs> mastermind, come on. Right. You know, <laughs> but the, um, but and I didn't really want one, you know, a lot historically there are people from different businesses. Like you get a lawyer and an accountant and a manufacturer and, you know, and you, you talk about ideas and, and I thought that sounded like something I was not interested in. But I did get interested in a group that are people who make things like me, you know, people who face the same problems I do. And we started this group a couple of years ago. And every Wednesday we get on a Zoom call. And throughout the pandemic, we've been talking to each other and all coaching each other about things that we think each other should do. And, you know, after uh, the Devon Think Field Guide came out, I was telling them that, you know, I was really disappointed that that looked like it was going to be the only field guide I got released this year with, you know, with the problem with shortcuts, I wasn't able to record on it as aggressively as I wanted to. And, um, it looked to me like we're going to get to the end of 2021. I'll have one field guide released. And, and then my, my, my friends in this group are like, okay, Dave, what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have this great analogy in the blog post and the blog post announcing all this is the first thing in the show notes. Um, yeah, but you have this great language in here about running, downhill and i think we've probably all experienced that right where you're you're sort of running you're going downhill and it's getting steeper and you're sort of running faster than you should be like like in a way like you're you're sort of just on um the edge of you know the balance between control and disaster and yeah yeah i i totally I, i can see that you know that you've been kind of in that zone for a little while yeah, too long, really, you know, and, and I, um, and the way I've been addressing it is I've been throwing clients overboard over the last several years, like anybody, if they don't pay, I'm like, sorry, I can't help you if they don't listen to me. So I've been getting more and more stingy about who makes the cut. And on the flip side, I'm more and more stingy about what I agree to as Max Sparky, all in hopes I could keep both of these things going at once. And when I had that call with my friends in the, in the creators guild, they gave me an assignment. They said, Hey, uh, next week when we meet again, you should have, tell us what your plan is to be able to get more than one field guide published next year, you know? And 
they did it. They said that in um, in the spirit of helping me, right? Mm-hmm. And I uh, and I was thinking to myself, well, you know, I gotta please these guys, but you know, I'm not gonna change much. I, I've got it figured out. This was just a bad year, you know. And I really didn't intend to change much, but I did want to go through the effort because they had they'd given me this assignment. And when I hung up the call on them, I thought I'm going to report next week that I'm going to get rid of 25% of my legal clients. You know, I'm going to scale the law practice down by 25%. And all I have to do is figure out which 25% go, you know, Mm -hmm. but I sat down and I started looking at it kind of more carefully. And, um, you know, one of those things, I, I think all of us, and if you listen to the focus podcast, Mike, and I talk about this, uh, we all spend so much time in the weeds. We don't spend enough time kind of higher elevation looking at what's going on. But I started looking at, you know, the numbers, like how much do I earn? And, um, I started looking at the costs and I really, for the first time in a long time, I, I made a list of the costs of practicing law, you know, and there's a lot of them, you know, I mean, not surprisingly. So if you want to be a lawyer, there's a lot of ways you can spend money, you know, between all those fixed costs. And, you know, that's one part of it. And historically, I'd kind of thought of it, well, this law practice doesn't cost me that much. You know, I can pay for the insurance and pay for all the stuff and I can still make make money doing this. But then I started thinking about the other costs and the costs are missed opportunities for Max Barkey. And the real cost for me, which I think is the thing that's been weighing on me is the emotional cost of being a lawyer. And I know we have a lot of lawyers in the audience and most of them are better at this than I am. But when, when I first started practicing, I used to like just lay in bed in the middle of the night and question everything I did the prior day. You know, it's like, I think doctors probably go through the same thing because people come to you with real problems they want your advice and you want to give them the right advice that's going mm-hmm. to take them to the best place. Right. And it was really hard for me to kind of separate from that at the beginning of my practice. And uh, now I've been practicing 28 years. I almost made it to 30, but I didn't quite. Um, in fact, th- for the numbers, it's, it took me seven years to get that education and pass the bar and 28 years of practice. So I had 35 years invested. I mean, this is a lot of my life. Yeah. But it, so I found myself in the last couple of years because my client list has got down to the people that I really value and like that I was having that same problem again. I was I wasn't able to separate myself from them the way I had been able to after some practice. And so what that means is when we went through the pandemic, I had these clients that had businesses that were on the verge of failure every day. And I would get on the phone, I would get on the phone with the bank and I would like beg them not to foreclose on them and like find ways and look for loopholes. And like, I was just like dancing so much to keep my clients from failing throughout that. And I would just like wake up in the middle of the night thinking about these people who were my friends. Some of them, were like multi-generational businesses where I used to represent the dad and now I represent the son because the dad's oh, retired. Wow. And I'm just trying to keep them afloat through all of this. And the pandemic is ending and I know that, you know, that will get better. But it just reminded me that I am not able to easily separate myself from these costs anymore. And I don't know if I needed therapy or if I just needed to grow up or whatever you call it, but I, I was having trouble doing that. And there's a real cost to that on you. You know? Um, I mean, quite often I'll wake up at 3am thinking about a client and I, I can't go back to sleep then. So I just get up sure. and work on their problem, you know, because what else am I going to do? Right. And that's not a, a sustainable way to, <laughs> to live. Right. And it's yeah. not a, it's not a way that that doesn't put you in a position where you can ever really turn it off. I would imagine, right? Like you said, yeah. like you're the, the firefighter, right? Like you may just be in the station. I don't know what firefighters do, playing cards and eating chili, but you always know that at any moment that bell can ring. And I mean, I I, I get it in a smaller sense owning a business the size of Relay, where like there's a bunch of people doing stuff all the time. Sure, but very little of it is as serious as some of the things that that you've mentioned as examples. I mean, it's gotta be a a heavy thing. Yeah, it it is. And, 
And so that got me thinking, well, this is, there is a cost to this. And then the flip side is there's the cost to Max Sparky, where I want to do so much more with this than I can. I want it, not only do I want to get more field guides out, I want to like share with people the stuff I'm experimenting on and things like that. But with all this client data, I, it's just not easy to do a lot of this. So here I am running downhill, trying to keep track of both things. And honestly, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of it. I mean, Max Barkey has grown. The law practice is, it was thriving, but it just didn't seem right. And then, so I was going through this experiment for my friends. I had already decided I was going to cut 25%. And then it occurred to me, well, what if I cut it by 50%, you know? Um, when I was thinking about that cost, like there are certain, you know, what if I made it even easier for myself and kept the work that does not require so much emotional investment and cost? And, mm-hmm. and it occurred to me pretty early in the process that that was the big cost for all of this to me, um, was was the investment and good lawyers will write me after this and say, Dave, you can separate yourself from this. That's what we do. That's your job. You're a professional and they're absolutely right. But for whatever reason, as I hit my middle age, I have got, I've fallen back into the thing I was doing when I first started, where I am so invested with these people. They're my friends, you know, they're not just clients right. to me. And, um, and it, it's, it's a huge mistake, but I made it and I was dealing with it. And, and I went to 50%. And then the math started kicking in. And I started looking at, well, how much money do I make for this? You know? And then not only, you know, then the, oh, suddenly those hard costs of being a lawyer kick in. And you start realizing that for giving up, you know, and I've been time tracking religiously. And, and the law practice takes on any given month, you know, between 40 and 70% of my time, you know? depending on what's going on, how many fires there are to put out. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know, is it worth it to give so much time over to, you know, for less money and, and frankly, this, this emotional investment cost and, and liability too. That's another thing as a lawyer, you're liable if you screw up, you know, and uh, you know, who wants that? I would say, I would say one thing just to, to interrupt for a second yeah. You know, I'm sure there are people out there who would hear this and say, you know, that the the friendships or intimacy, whatever the word may be, with your clients is like a bad thing and you you can separate that. But I would argue as someone who knows you both as a, a I, I know you from both sides, right? Because you represented Relay for seven years. Um, I think that that's one of your greatest strengths as a human being, your ability to connect in friendship with people. And so I hope you're not taking that too hard on yourself. Um, I think anyone who, who has spent any time with you knows that that's just who you are. And if it makes you a, a different type of lawyer, then so what? Yeah. Well, I've always kind of prided my practice on what I called a country doctor practice where um, I wasn't there to extract as much money as possible from a client, but just to take care of what their needs are and try and keep a small bill, you know? And, um, but that's like a whole different thing. Someday I can talk to you about the practice of law and and it definitely has evolved in a lot of weird directions over the years. But, Mm -hmm. but when I started like thinking about it more of like, what if I cut it further? And then you kind of come to the, the point of, and this is a good friend of mine, Ernie Svensson, who's kind of a coach of mine too. He says, well, what if it was easy? You know? So Ernie's had any Ernie's voice came in my head. I said, well, what if this was easy? Well, if this was easy, I would have no clients and I would just have one thing. And I had never really thought about that seriously. I know that sounds crazy. I've been doing Max Sparky and law together for 15 years now. Um, but I'd always thought that that was something I would do together. And I think part of it was I always thought of the law as a parachute, you know, like if, if Max Barkey fell apart, if people didn't care about what I said anymore and didn't listen to the shows and by the field guides, I could always fall back on this little, little law practice to pay the bills, you know? Um, but I'd never really thought about, well, what if I got rid of my parachute? And like, as soon as I did it, it, you know, the options really open up for me, right? Suddenly I'm not trying to ride two horses. I'm riding one. That's why it's in the blog post. But I mean, the idea, what if I could just devote all of my effort to one thing? Mm -hmm. 
And it was immediately appealing. It was like a light bulb went on when I gave my permission, myself permission to go there. So it was crazy. I started texting you and like, I'm like, I guess it was kind of night for you, but I had a decision made like within a day, really within yeah. an hour, you know? Yeah. I mean, sometimes it, it's, it just takes that one right question you know, or, or that one right discussion. Like for me, it was y'all at the tea shop and I, I came back to Memphis. I went back to my job, which if I wasn't doing relay, like I, I, I enjoyed that job. I enjoyed working for that company. I enjoyed the work that we did, but that conversation and like sort of the question of like, if not now, when for me, that was the question that sort of reframed the whole conversation in my mind and really showed me that, okay, it is now time to do this. And sometimes it is those those simple conversations, those simple questions that just change your viewpoint or angle on something, and then you, you see what the answer was all along. This episode of Mac Power Users is made possible by 1Password. 1Password is the application I use to not only create strong, unique passwords, but sync them across all of my devices. So no matter where I am, if I'm at my desk or on my laptop somewhere, maybe I just have my iPad at the park and need to log into something, 1Password is there. All my credentials are stored in my devices securely so I can log into all of my accounts easily. With 1Password for families, I can share login information uh, with my spouse. So she and I have a shared vault where things that we both need access to are And then we have our own personal vaults. And so we can have our own logins as well. It's easy to move things between them, share passwords. And it's uh, it's really been a game changer for us at home. And at work, 1Password uh, for Teams is huge. We use it at Relay FM. We have several vaults set up for different parts of the company. And it's really easy to manage that critical information with fine-grained control thanks to 1Password for Teams. 1Password works for way more than just passwords, though. Secure notes, software licenses, identification, debit and credit cards. I have all sorts of stuff in my 1Password. But it's easy to get to. If I'm on my iPad mini, it just unlocks with my fingerprint. With my phone, unlocks with Face ID. And if I'm on my Mac, I can do it with the Touch ID button on my laptop or with my Apple Watch on my Mac Pro. 1Password works really hard at integrating as tightly as they can into the system. So there's no additional friction by using a better tool when it comes to password management. 1Password is simply easy and secure. I've used it for a long time and I can't imagine using anything else. So to learn more and to uh, get 20% off when you sign up, go to onepasswordcom slash MPU. It's MPU in all caps. There you can sign up for a free 30-day trial. And again, you'll get 20% off onepassword.com slash MPU. So it was really strange, like suddenly realizing that this was not only an option, but something I was seriously considering. And I called you, well, actually I texted you and I called some, some friends and ran the idea by, by them. Some of them were nerd friends and they were all 100% on because that's the only part of my life they know. In fact, I would venture to guess there are some listeners of the show that don't realize that I've been a full-time lawyer for 28 years. Um, oh, for sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't try and like make a big deal about it on the show, but it does come up. Um, yeah. I mean, you don't make me call you like Esquire, you know, or anything. Yeah. Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I maybe I should reconsider that. It would be co- pretty cool if I made Too late you call now, me man. You, it's gone. <laughs> I, one time I had a, a client, a, a late, a nice lady client of mine. She was a widower, and I loved her, but she kept getting into business with dumb people. Mm-hmm. So I told her she's no longer able to enter business with somebody without them, without me approving them first. You okay. Know? <laughs> So, so she, she took it seriously and she came and visited me with a new potential partner that wanted to, her to get in on an auto repair business. And I thought, this is a dumb idea. I mean, she knows nothing about cars. And, and the guy gave me his card and it said, you know, John Smith, and we'll just say John Smith, Esquire at the end. I said, Esquire? I said, oh, are you a lawyer? He's like, oh, no, I have some distant relation to royalty. So I'm allowed to call myself Esquire. 
And I immediately <laughs> told him, this is not going to work. You might as well just leave now. <laughs> <laughs> this is everything you do know about that person, doesn't it? <laughs> that, that said everything. That said everything. I told her you're not allowed to do business with him. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had my secretary run him in the database and he had been sued for fraud like six times. So Perfect. I felt like we, we did okay there. But anyway, yeah. So um, allowing yourself sometimes to think about stuff like this is, it can be really enlightening. And, you know, the other side of this is that I love being Max Sparky. I mean, I, I can't state it enough. I mean, I just got an email yesterday from somebody um, who was in Africa helping people, refugees get out and using tips from Mac power users to help get around problems in the process, you know, like Holy moly. <laughs> literally getting people out weeks earlier because of things he had learned on the show. Wow. And, you know, I love the effect I have on people. I love every interaction I have with the listener reader I love the process of making the field guides. Um, I love the feedback I get when they release. So, you know, so in addition to me having these costs of law, there is this upside of this other thing. And, you know, uh, the Dalai Lama, in one of his books had written that each one of us grows an entirely new set of cells every seven years. And I've never like looked up the research on that to see if that's true, but I've just kind of accepted it because it's so convenient and I do often think about that, like, you know, seven years, you're a new person every seven years. Like, like when I first started practicing law, that was four sparkies ago, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I really do think that there was a time in my life where I had a sense of purpose from practicing law. And that was the, you know, obviously, you know, setting aside my wife and kids, but the, the professional or the, you know, the career part of me was fed by going to court and trying cases and making objections and doing all the stuff that is involved with being a lawyer. And I really enjoyed it, but that was four lifetimes ago, you know? And I realized that at this point in my life, I don't want to be doing that. I feel like I'm good at it. I don't feel like, you know, I'm providing a disservice to my clients. Indeed, I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm better at it now than I've ever been. But I feel like it's time to kind of move on. Yeah. And I just, you know, once I started to think, well, what if I went to 100% Max Barkey and I realized I'd be much happier and I wouldn't be waking up at 3 a.m. I'd be making much better Max Barkey stuff and I wouldn't be running downhill. I mean, it, it all, you know, the, the pieces just kind of tumbled into place when I considered mm-hmm. it, you know. And so I started talking to friends and, um, and they were giving me generally good feedback. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I would imagine those conversations are sort of weird because you have these two really like parallel careers uh, that you've, you know, you've, you've kind of been like Batman and Bruce Wayne for a long time. And yeah. n- now you're just going to be Batman all the time. I assumed Batman was like the cool guy with the podcast. Yeah, he had to be right. Yeah. And and yeah. like and the identity thing is always an issue, right? You know, I identify as a lawyer. I've been doing working on it for thirty five years. But honestly, I think I identify as Max Sparky more than as a lawyer at this point. Anyway, talking to lawyer friends, they were shockingly um, supportive. They're like, "Well, can you make enough to make a living at it?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Then you should do it." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was it was kind of scary how many of my lawyer friends were you know, so eager to throw mm-hmm. aside their career, you know, one of them said to me, he says, um, it's the, it's the spark shank redemption. I'm oh, like, that's what, good. Do you, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, that scene at the end of Shawshank, you know, where he climbs through the sewer of all that, you know, sewage and he climbs out into the rain. And then the, you know, the lights are on him and he's, he's cleaning and, you know, like, crying out in freedom i said yeah he's like that's you but i'm still in the sewage behind you and i hate you for it (laughs) (laughs) well i I was surprised how many lawyer friends in fact i think the lawyer listeners might understand where i'm coming from i know you know the, the, the interesting thing about this is i've had some real negative feedback too from people as i've shared what i'm doing and i'm sure there'll be a few listeners that feel that way too but a lot of my lawyer friends had, were actually extremely understanding and supportive. And then 
I had this weird process once I made the decision. One lawyer friend said, well, you know, you don't have any obligation to those clients. Just tell them that you're done and they'll have to go find somebody. And there was just no way I could do that. I mean, these people are friends. And so I actually went through my whole client list and looked at what are their needs and who do I know that um, could help them, you know? And and the other thing I got told was, well, just sell it. You can like, there are like brokerages where you can sell your clients. And I'm like, that is super weird. I'm not going to do that. You know, (laughs) I'm not going to just hand them over to whoever gives me the most money. Right. Right. I mean, that'd be so different and like anti the way that you've run your practice for so long. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you didn't even consider that for a heartbeat. No, no. And then, so what I did was I found good people that I thought matched them. But then I had to have this conversation with like a hundred clients to say, Hey, Mm -hmm. um, I know I've represented you for 25 years, but, uh, I'm not gonna be your lawyer anymore. I'm shutting it down. And the reactions I got to that. So I went, I went through the process 25 times and some of them like had come to me via Max Sparky, like people who had listened to the show and, and became, had hired me as their lawyer. And they're like, oh yeah, I was wondering when you were going to make this call, you know? (laughs) (laughs) know? (laughs) And then others had no idea, you know, they truly only saw Bruce Wayne, you know? And so I'm like, well, I have this, you know, and I didn't really want to go through the whole thing. Right. You know? So I would say, well, I have this internet business and it's doing well and I want to focus on that. And they're like, what are you talking about? You know? And so that was like a whole thing I went through and some of them, got really angry with me. Like, you're an idiot. I can't believe you're doing this, you know? And then some of them were really afraid for me. My One of my favorite responses was this client uh, who I've represented since I was a young lawyer, and now him, both him and I are a lot older. And he called me the next day and he says, I, I, I stayed up last night worried about you. I think you're having a midlife crisis and you're making a huge mistake, you know? Because he just had no idea sure. what I do with Max Barkey. And so, so I got to go through that process like a hundred times, you know, oh. getting clients, <laughs> you know, off to other people. So I, I've been doing that the last three months, a lot of that and, and getting people moved off. But the, the, the bright side is, you know, um, this has happened and, uh, and it's really, uh, it's, it's really, uh, the next step in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, about what this next step looks like you're setting aside the law practice. You've had this conversation now a bunch of times. Um, and I imagine each one of those conversations had their own like variation. I mean, I can't, I can't, I thought about you several times when I knew you were doing this, but how exhausting it must be just like to have to like yeah. have this conversation over and over, especially in a busy time of year. You're, you know, I, yeah. I don't envy having to chase down all these people. Yeah. But with with the law practice behind you, you said you want to do some more things as Max Sparky. What does that look like? Uh, the the thought in my head is more and better. You know, if I get suddenly forty to seventy percent more time, what could I do? And one thing I could do is more. Like I feel like I'm not going to have any more one field guide years. You mm-hmm. know, I've got a list of titles I, that I want to do. And I always have trouble finding time for them because I never know when the fire bell is going to ring. Well, guess what? I just disabled the fire bell. And and I really meant that. I mean, the last time I had my schedule was 1992 before I started practicing. And with this new schedule, I will, people will not have the ability to hijack my day like they used to. So uh, I can become much more intentional about the time I put into the things that I want to be working on. And so there will be more field guides, which is cool. And I've, you know, I'm going to, I've got one, I'm, I'm working on the shortcuts one now. Finally, it's getting stable enough for me to finish it. <laughs> and, um, Oh, shortcuts. And yeah. And then I've got like other things I want to do. I want to cover on that. So that's, that's one thing I want to do, but I, I just want to also do everything better. You know, it's like, what if I could put another five to 10 hours a week into Mac power users? How much better could it be? Same thing. Uh, the focus podcast is, I think one of my favorite podcasts to make, but it, it's never really found its legs. And I think it's partly because, you know, I'm always, you know, running downhill and I want to put more effort into making that a better show. Cause I think it's an important show. Automator is the same. So I want the podcast to go there. I'm not going to add a bunch of new podcasts. I just want to make the stuff I'm doing better, you know? 
And that's kind of goes for the field guides and the blog. And I'm going to do like, I really like doing these webinars, but finding time for them is hard. I don't charge for them. And, you know, it takes time to get ready for them. So I'd like to do a monthly webinar, you know, why not just have anybody that wants to come in and learn something from me do that. And so I want to just take the stuff I'm doing and turn up the quality knob on it and a little bit of the quantity knob. YouTube is another thing. I've got like 10,000 followers on YouTube, but I don't do enough with that content. But but if I have this extra time, I can suddenly sit down and make some some videos more often and, and be more regular about that stuff. So really for this next year, what I want to do is a little more and a little better. That's the focus. Um, uh, and that's been kind of the fun part is I've been working through this process of, you know, getting these clients, you know, transitioned then I would stop and say, okay, now let's look at the sparky bonus. You know, you've got this extra time. What mm-hmm. are you going to start doing with it? And I've really enjoyed looking at that. And I've come up with a lot of good ideas. There's other stuff I'd like to try in the future, but I just want to kind of nail things down first to yeah. begin with. Yeah. And this is, this is one area in particular where your journey is, is different than sort of the rest of our sort of in this club of people we know because a lot of us, we basically walked away from like a nine to five once our side thing was up and running. So like when I quit my previous job, I was already working basically full time or close to it. I was just never sleeping. It was terrible. Um, And then I had to like figure out how to can try to contain my work life back into 40 hours because it hadn't been 40 hours for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, And you have a little, I mean, you have, you have that too. I know you work a lot. Um, but you have, but you, well, you have that I didn't, and that most of us didn't is you have already a decade and a half experience as a sort of as a, as a content person, right? Yeah. So you're not having to build those, those basic planks, uh, in the ship. Those are already there. And you're, you're really, you have the ability now to like add on to what you've already done. It's sort of an inverse flow from, I think what a lot of us struggled through in our early days. Yeah, I just really want to dial in what I have. I mean, and yeah. make no mistake, this was an expensive decision. I mean, I threw a lot of money overboard um, by hanging up the law practice, but I think it's going to be okay. I mean, I guess that's another piece of this. I haven't really talked about money, but the, you know, my kids are still in college. You know, it's like, is this irresponsible of me, but I just felt like I don't really have a choice that if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. And, um, um, and I'm doing okay as Max Sparky alone. So, you know, even at current levels, I think I could make it work, but I think I could, if I put more into it, it could be so much better. And, um, and, you know, like I was saying earlier, I get such good feels from doing this stuff. It really feels like the work that I'm meant to be doing right now. Why am I spending any time on anything else? I mean, another thing that weighed into this for me, I know I'm just kind of like spilling out words at this point (laughs) because I haven't really thought it through. But like if I was on my dad's clock, I got nine years left, you know, Mm. it's like, why would I do anything except what I especially if I can make a living at it? Why would I be doing anything except what I'm really passionate about right now? You know, or purposeful, maybe passion's not the right word. I've been doing 15 years, but the um but it's just, I feel like it's kind of my purpose. And why wouldn't I be working on that 100%? This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash MPU and make your next move. And enter offer code MPU at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, they've got you covered. Squarespace combines cutting-edge design and world-class engineering, making it easier than ever to establish your home online and make your ideas a reality. Squarespace has everything you need to create a beautiful and modern website. You start with a professionally designed template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. You can customize the look and feel, the settings, the products you have on sale, and more with just a few clicks. And all Squarespace websites are optimized for mobile, your content automatically adjusts, so it will look great on any device. You'll also get free unlimited hosting, top-of-the-line security, and dependable resources to help you succeed. 
with Squarespace. There's nothing to patch or upgrade. They have award-winning 24-7 customer support if you need any help. They'll even let you quickly and easily grab a unique domain name. Plus, you'll have everything you need for SEO and email marketing to get your ideas there. You can use Squarespace to turn your big idea into a new website, showcase your work with their incredible portfolio designs, publish your next blog post, promote your business, or announce an upcoming event, and much more, all with their easy-to-use interface and hosting. I've used Squarespace for years. I still use it with the DLR Field Guide website. And the thing I love about it is it's just not that expensive to set up. And it has basically everything you need in the box. To, it's just so easy to get started. If you know anybody that needs to build a website, I always say the starting place is Squarespace. So head over to squarespace.com slash MPU for a free trial with no credit card required. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code MPU to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And that's once again, squarespace.com slash MPU. When you decide to sign up, use the offer code MPU to get 10% off your purchase and to show your support for the Mac Power users. Our thanks to Squarespace for their support of the Mac Power users and all of Relay FM. I know from uh, kind of behind the scenes working with you that a large uh, part of this move is something that you have labeled brilliantly, by the way, Max Sparky Labs. So yeah. <laughs> with this uh, with this ability now to turn up the quantity and quality, you are adding in this layer of additional content for people who want to back your work directly. So tell us a little bit about Max Sparky Labs. Yeah, I have always been resistant to subscriptions uh, for like my blog or the stuff I do because I didn't want to get on like a calendar where I felt like I had to put out stuff, whether it was good or not. Um, but I felt like one of the things I realized as I went into this is not only will I have more time to do experiments, like I did a thing um, a few months ago where I went through all the task managers, but I couldn't share any of it because it was full of client data, you know, so... <laughs> Like I want to, I'm going to have even more time to do these experiments and things. And, and there's a lot of stuff I do that never really makes it to the show or to the blog because I decided it wasn't worth it or for whatever reason. Right. Um, but now all of a sudden I'm going to have a database that's going to be clear of, you know, the stuff that I'm legally prohibited from sharing. Right. And, um, and I wanted to like bring people on that journey, kind of more behind the scenes and early access kind of stuff. And uh, that actually kind of makes sense. And, and, you know, realizing that I did just throw over, you know, bucket loads of money, I'm like, well, maybe if people want to help support me, can I give them something of value? And that's when I came up with the idea for Max Sparky Labs. And uh, if you go to maxsparky.com slash join, I've got like different levels and you can get in, but I'm going to be making additional blog posts and videos and probably newsletters. And, mm -hmm. um, and just, I want to do what I call virtual meetups where people and who are supporters and me can get on like maybe once in a while on zoom and just like, just talk about what's new and what we're doing. Um, I want to be able to, when I'm working on an experiment with a new app to kind of like bring people along with me on the journey with little videos and just kind of share them out. Um, I have friends of Dave, like me and Kurash Dini do this call like every couple months where we just talk about what's new and what we're doing. And, um, with his permission, we'll, we'll, we'll record that and share it. But I do those calls with you and a bunch of other people too. I'm just going to have a bunch of extra content for you. Let's yeah. just put it that way. And, uh, and I thought it would be fun. And then the other thing is um, at the top tier, um, I'm even going to let you behind the curtain a little bit on some of the field guides and some of the stuff that's going on there too. So I, I made this thing called uh, Max Barkey Labs. And I'm actually kind of really looking forward to generating the content for it because it's a bunch of stuff that I could never talk about before. And now I get to talk about it. And And I want it to be clear, you don't have to join this to get good stuff from me. I mean... This is all additional to what I'm already doing. I'm still going to be right. doing the free webinars and still going to be making these shows and everything. But, but if you'd like to support me, you can, and you will get something for it. And, um, and so I decided to do that. And, um, that was a whole journey too, kind of figuring out what that means and, yeah. you know, what, what are the things you share and what's the workflow for this? And so it's been kind of fun setting that up in the background, but that's there now you can go ahead and sign up. I got a new logo. 
You do have it. Oh man, we <laughs> we went back and forth on this. You, yeah. you you let me into the into the logo concepting yeah. as well, and boy, is it good. Yeah. Um, and I like using the black and white versus the color for Max Sparky Labs. I think that's just like a chef's kiss emoji, you know, kind of yeah. kind of moment for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about Labs. I know firsthand, not so much from 512 Pixels, it has a membership and it's it's a lot of fun. It's basically a newsletter and advanced access to my videos. But uh, the Relay membership, like really that's like, that's my part of the company revenue. You know, Mike is over our sales because I'm really a bad salesperson. So he doesn't let me sell ads. Uh, I don't want to yeah. sell ads, uh, but I run the membership program. And, you know, we rebooted it a year and a half ago. And really figuring out like what goes where in a membership and what you're going to charge and what you think people want. And like, it's all so very complicated and I'm a little jealous that, that you are doing it now uh, because a bunch of us have like had the battle scars of trying it early. Like Relay's membership first launched six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And that first iteration wasn't very good. And, um, and I think you've really nailed it with your levels and what you're offering. Um, you have nice colorful buttons, which I also really appreciate on this website. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you're doing a, a three tier system and monthly or annual signups, which I think makes all makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I am so looking forward to making this content. I, you know, honestly, um, this is the only really new thing I'm adding you know, with this big transition, but like being able to just turn a camera on and share a new app I'm working through and talk about what I like about and dislike about it without turning it into like a whole thing or like, you know, zip out a quick screencast on what, how this works or that works, you know? Um, I think it's going to be so fun to make this stuff and get it out there. I, um, you know, well, you know, as the show releases, it's the first week of it. Nobody signed up yet because I wanted to announce this on Mac Power Users. Yeah. But I hope at least one of you signs up and then I'll have somebody <laughs> I can send this stuff to because I already have stuff. Yeah. And I'm you, also gonna you, know, have... you know what, David? David, know what I'm going to do? Uh, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm joining right now. Oh, man. You're I got it best. loaded up. You're the best. Boom. You are the, you're the best. I, the I have one. a subscriber. I'm in. All right. Oh, man. Thank you, Stephen. Follow my lead, that. dear listener. You're you're my number one, Stephen. Number oh, one. thanks. I think uh, being first means you have to tattoo my face on your calf oh, no. or something. Oh no, I can't tattoo. I can't do that. How about like <laughs> um, a sharpie? How's that Good for a week? Yeah. Your wife's gonna love it. Uh, put a big five twelve <laughs> on my forehead. Right there. Yeah. You're gonna get but looks the, uh, at yeah. Disney. That's for sure. Yeah, I will. I definitely will. <laughs> but the um, but like you know even like fun stuff like I was looking at. Uh, just yesterday, I was looking at my desk. I'm like, I've got to redo my cables. I'm like, well, why don't I just do that as part of Sparky Labs and just set up a video? Yep. And just like share it with the audience just, and just stream it. Yeah. And do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I want to have, I mean, it's funny because I, I just recently had a friend of mine get on a Zoom call with me and another lawyer who's thinking about leaving it, leaving the practice because my friend knows that I'm doing this. And, um, I realized halfway through the call that I was such an advocate of this guy quitting law and he was much younger than I am. I'm like, man, I got to tone myself down, but I am so excited about this extra time and what I can do with it. It's like, I'm just going to be on, I, I don't know. I just, I, man, I am so excited. What I'm excited about, uh, about the backstage and early access stuff in particular is like, like you said, a lot of this you've been doing and I've gotten to see some of it just because we work closely together on this show yeah, and some like other you projects. And I get online and I'll share my obsidian with you or something. Yeah. yeah. And like I'm pumped for people to see more of that. And I know just from like the relay membership and some of the stuff that I've done too, there's something really refreshing as like as a creator and air quotes. I don't love that phrase, but whatever. Uh, people who make content for the internet having a group of people that you can release stuff to in advance or it's not quite finished or not as polished or what, or just like behind the scenes, like, you know, when you're doing your cable management live stream, which I 100% will watch and try not to critique the use of duct tape. Oh, you will. You definitely um, will. I promise to behave. Uh, I find it really refreshing, like as a creator to do that sort of stuff. Cause it's just low key. 
but as you know, I back a lot of people in the space doing stuff and I like the behind the scenes access, you know, I like that. Oh, okay. I don't really know this person necessarily, but like we have a relationship because of this. And, um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm pumped about it. People should go sign up, become a, a labs member. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I, I really intend to make this fun for anybody that signs up. Whichever level you get in, I'm going to have something for you. And uh, um, just, you know, kind of come with me on this journey. I don't know what else to say. Um, but, you know, the whole idea of this and the thing that I keep coming back to is for 15 years, I've been doing a law practice and a Max Sparky thing at the same time. And it's like, how much better can Max Sparky be if I just gave it everything? And that's the bet I'm making. I mean, being a lawyer was the sure thing for me. I could have done that until they put me in a box and made a living, you know, no matter what, no matter what happened. If, if next week everybody mm-hmm. stopped listening to Mac Powers and stopped buying field guys, I could have made a living, but um, that's gone now. And, yeah. uh, and I guess just to be clear, I have, what I've done is I've, I've basically given my clients to other lawyers and I'm in the process of making my license inactive. I want to be able to say to people, you know, I can't help you. I'm not mm-hmm. active, you know? And and I guess, you know, like my sister, um, who's a little afraid is like, well, you can always go back to it. Right. And I'm like, well, I'm inactive. I could reactivate, but honestly, this is a one way trip, Steven. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to keep up with changes in the law. Um, my clients are gone. I mean, you know, when I, when this process first started, I kept thinking about that Cortez story, how he got to the new world and he burned his ships. Mm -hmm. But for me, gang, this process started in October. Now we're in January, right? Um, By late November, by Thanksgiving, my ships were in ashes because I had already like told most of the clients and they had already accepted that they were moving on. And so it's over, you know, and now I need to make this work, but I have so much time. I feel like I can make this work. I have faith. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think it's uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, like I told you, it's like it's about damn time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and and the thing that has always impressed me about you as Max Sparky is like, it's not like the blog is bad. It's like I mean, the podcasts are great, the the writing is great, and so just having more of you in it, I'm really excited about. Uh, you know, yeah. you, you you have said you said to me you said in this episode that you know sometimes the other side, right? Bruce Wayne needs Batman's time or vice versa. And I know that to be true. Um, but you know, I've witnessed it, but I, th- like I said, like you said, I think people on the outside, not knowing that you have that, had that going on. I think some of them are going to be really surprised. Like, Oh man, like I've already seen like this was his full time gig. And so to bring that to the next level, man, I'm pumped. Yeah. Yeah. Me too, man. I, uh, you know, as this show publishes is kind of my first working day as just Max Sparky. And I really wanted to share that with the audience. That's the reason why the show got delayed till Monday yes. morning game. Cause I didn't yeah. want to put it on Sunday. I wanted to kind of just like have a day of, of breathing before mm-hmm. this all started. But yeah, man, it, it is uh, I got a big smile on my face right now as we're talking about it. And, you know, people like you uh, really helped me on this journey. And honestly, This all starts with the Mac Power Users audience. I mean, I had no idea that making this nerdy podcast would ever resonate with anybody. Hmm. And this is the starting point for me that I grew this kind of Mac Sparky thing. And um, you could call it a business because it does make money, but it's more than that to me. It's really like a purpose um, than it is a business. And uh, And man, I mean, where would I be if I hadn't done that? You know, I'd still be, I guess, making a living practicing law, but my life would be so less rich. Yeah, that that is something that and we talk about it some, but I want to underline it here. You know, I'm on other tech shows, like I'm on Connected, which is a show of a similar size, but we cover news and rumors and play games. It's a totally different vibe. The feedback we get for MPU and the the interaction we have with that with you, the audience, it is truly like the joy of my work week. Um, you know, not to put down any other project and not, not, don't hear what I'm not saying, but the, the way Mac power users works and the types of things we get to discuss, the interviews we get to do, the workflow shows, the deep dives and, and y'all, we got some wild stuff in the, in the hopper for this year. Yeah. 
it is just a really different thing. And I'd always, because I listened to MPU forever before I joined, and I'd always hear you and Katie talk about that. And I didn't really understand it until I started being CC'd on all of those emails. And yeah. it really is true. And the reason that you get to do this is because of the Mac Power Users audience and the people reading Mac Sparky. But the same is true for me, 100%, right? People not, you know, people listening to the shows, people reading 512, like that is why we get to do what we do. And for me, those emails and notes and tweets, whatever it may be, it's such a joy to to hear from people. And it's one thing that I honestly, I'm on a tangent now. We'll get back in a second, I promise. Sure, sure. It's one thing that has just broken my heart over the last two years of not being able to travel and do live shows, not getting to hang out with people in our community. And hopefully it can come back soon. But it is... What's cool about the labs and what's cool about things like more power users and all these things that we do is we do have the opportunity to like have relationships with people who listen to the shows and read the sites. And it's just, it's a real honor to be on the receiving end of that. Yeah. I okay. mean, there are, there are a couple <laughs> listeners of the show. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, there are a couple of listeners of the show that are such good friends at this point. And the only reason I know them is because of the emails we've shared is they've known about this for months. There, there's one listener that I literally called the, the day after I made the big decision to see what he thought about it, you know, and, and he helped me figure out what, what would be good for the labs. And like, it is a very two way street here, you know, with the Mac power users in our audience. Um, but, but either way, I, uh, I'm with you hundred percent on that. And, and it's just so strange to me that I fell into this. It was never a plan. And, you know, where the legal career was something very deliberate, something that, you know, you go through college and you study and you do all this stuff to get to it the whole Max Sparky career just kind of fell in my lap yep. and I was so fortunate to get it. And, and, uh, at this point in my life, this is something that I want to be my focus. I mean, uh, I was thinking about it, something that came to my mind several times as I went through this with the clients is, you know, I think I can break my life into three pieces right now at the age I am, you know, I'm in my low fifties. Um, uh, so the first trimester, you know, I, um, I grew up and got educated, you know, that, that was, I spent all that time, you know, you know, from, from birth to law school, you know, that was roughly the first 25 years of my life. And then the next 25 years, plus a little, um, I spent in that career as a lawyer and, you know, I mean, there was a lot more to it. You know, I raised my children and, you know, had a great, you know, run with my wife that is continuing and uh the um but that say, was you know wait the, <laughs> phrasing yeah, i know that's i realized as i said that that didn't come out right but the uh <laughs> yeah my wife and i we have a great time together in yes. fact she's going to be helping me out a lot with the yeah. the max sparky stuff and i'll just say y'all's christmas card i think it's the best <laughs> one we got this year you, really maybe yeah. i you know what i'm just gonna let's just put a, a image of it in the show notes hell hell why not you know the Very um, good. but we uh we, uh, yeah, it, it, our Christmas card this year, you either get it or you don't. And, and, uh, that's all I'll say. If you look at the picture, you'll either get it or you don't. <laughs> the, uh, but, but either way, so, so the next, you know, but really the focus of my professional life was my clients, you know, and honestly, that was the reason why I got from 50% to hundred percent. Cause I realized the focus will always be the clients. Whenever someone is paying me to solve their problems, I'm always going to put their problems ahead of mine. And, and that, I think that's human nature, right? I mean, how can you let somebody, you'll let yourself down before you let somebody else down. And the only way I was going to be able to really give Max Barkey everything was to give Max Barkey everything, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so, so I got another third ahead of me and what am I going to do with it? And, I am declaring here that my purpose for the duration is Max Sparky and let's see where we go. And if you want to join me on this journey, hop on. I can't wait to get started. And it, it's weird saying that because I've been doing Max Sparky for 15 years, but I feel like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's just like, I feel like I, this gives me like a couple more gears. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good way of, of thinking about it. You're just, yeah, you're putting more, more horsepower behind something that's already up and running, right? It's 
you, you have this machinery. And, and that's one question I, I, I had for you. I guess I'll ask it now is I know a, a good bit of, of what we talk about and what you write about comes from the other side, right? Things you see, problems you want to solve for people. Yeah. Do you, how, how do you see that balance moving forward? Is it, do, do, are you worried about that sort of thing? Not really. Um, uh, that was some of the feedback I got from people as I was going through the process. They're like, well, you know, what makes you interesting in Max Sparky is that you're also a lawyer. So you're not somebody who writes about this stuff because this is all you do. But the fact is I have almost 30 years of client service and I'm not going to just forget about that. Yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff that I came up with to solve client problems, I never could share because they involved client problems. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, this gives me the freedom to like start addressing some of that stuff with hypothetical clients and building databases out. And this, it just gives me more time to kind of actually explain it better. Yeah. So if you're worried about that, if you think I'm going to suddenly turn to garbage because of that, then (laughs) just hang in there for six months. I think you'll see that things only get better. Yeah. And and I'll, as someone who, I mean, I worried about that, you know, my career was in it, a lot of it, Apple, a lot of it outside of Apple. And then a little bit at a marketing firm right before I left my job. I was only there at the marketing firm for like a year and a half. I worried about that. I worried that, oh, I have this like hardware software expertise that is going to die on the vine because I'm not feeding it, you know, working in IT every day. And the reality for me, at least, has been that hasn't happened. I've kept up with it just as easily as I did when I was working on it day to day, cause I'm interested in it, right? You're still interested in how people get their work done with technology. That's never going to change about you. And yeah. so of course you're going to be able to, to keep up with it. Uh, but yeah. the thing that, that I have discovered in sort of my six years of being independent now is interest that I had before that I didn't have time to explore, whether they led to content or not, uh, those have had time and space to grow now. So like my interest yeah. in computer history, for instance, has been there forever but it wasn't until I had the time to like, okay, I want to bring this into what I do on 512 pixels in particular. How do I do that? What does that look like? I never could have done that before. And so I think that question, I think it's a good one to ask, but I'm not worried, you know, I'm not worried about it for you because the things that made you great as Max Barkey halftime are going to continue as Max Barkey full time. Yeah. I really feel like, um, the uh like my real thing with max sparky if you boil it down it's apple technology and productivity that's the two things that i'm most interested in like um i'm all in with apple tech how can you use it to be more productive and there's like so much i want to talk about that i never had time for that i mean i've got a list a mile long of new stuff to cover so Mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't think there's going to be a problem there This episode of Mac Power Users is brought to you by FitBod. It's normal for people to start considering their health and fitness a little bit more around this time of year. But between balancing work, family, and everything else we have going on, it can sometimes be hard to make fitness a priority. You need a program that works with you, not against you, and that's why you need FitBod. FitBod's algorithm learns about you, your goals, and your training ability. It will craft a personalized exercise plan that's unique to you. Their app makes it incredibly easy to learn exactly how much to perform each exercise. Personal fitness is not about competing with others. You don't want to look to other people, try to stack up against them and do what they do. What you need is something that will work for you. That's when it really sticks and when you'll see the results you're looking for. FitBod uses data to create and adjust your dynamic fitness plan and you'll have instant access to your personalized routines and their fantastic app, so you can make progress on your goals from anywhere. One of my favorite things about FitBot is that you can tell it exactly what equipment you have available to you. If you're like me, you've probably assembled a hodgepodge of things during the last two years. Mine's in the corner of uh, of my garage. And as I add things or change things up, I can tell FitBot in it, reworks my plans to take advantage of the equipment that I've bought. Everyone's fitness path is different. That's why FitBod does so much work to make sure they customize things exactly to suit you. The app learns from your last workout so your next one will be even better, whether you work out twice a day or twice a week. 
FitBot even tracks muscle recovery to make sure your plan is balanced with a variety of exercises to make sure you're not overworking anything. With brand new HD video tutorials, FitBod makes sure that learning each exercise is a breeze, and it integrates with the Apple Watch, Wear OS smartwatches, and apps like Strava, Fitbit, and even Apple Health. Personalized training of this quality can be expensive, but FitBod is $12.99 a month, or $79.99 a year. You can get 25% off that by signing up at FitBod, F-I-T-B-O-D, fitbod.me slash mpu so kick off the new year the right way get your customized fitness plan at fitbod.me slash mpu and get 25 percent off your membership our thanks to fitbod for the support of the show and relay fm so in addition to you know burning my ships and setting them a setting them aflame on the legal side i spent the last three months or so working on kind of back in stuff for Mac Sparky to be ready for this. Um, so I thought, you know, it, it can't be a Mac power users episode without getting into some of the workflows in the tech. That's right. <laughs> um, the, um, for the Sparky labs thing, I spent a bunch of time researching, uh, Patreon memberful and a bunch of other platforms. Um, and I ultimately chose memberful and that's not because they sponsor the show. Um, it's because I felt like they were the right fit for me. Mm-hmm. Um, Memberful has got some really cool stuff. Like, first of all, um, I can set up all these different tiers, and I have basically three tiers. And then I have a platform that allows me to target like emails or podcasts or whatever to the people in the different tiers. So, like, yep. when I've got a new video I'm going to put up on YouTube, and I, I, a lot of times I finish these things early. I'm going to send it out to, you know, the early access supporters so they can see it and I can target it out to an email to them and they can say, say, here's the secret link for something I'm going to release. And then, you know, kind of have a conversation with those people about it. And so all that stuff is supported by memberful. They make it really easy on the back end. They handle collecting the money and stuff. So I don't have to deal with that. And, um, but it did require, it was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back on me switching the blog over to WordPress. Yeah. Um, I will say you definitely made the right call with memberful. They are a sponsor. Um, but I've had a working relationship with them since 2015 when we first launched the relay membership. And when we relaunched it a year and a half ago, it was built on the back of a lot of their new features. Like you talked about, uh, podcast RSS feeds. They they rolled in a newsletter thing just a couple months ago, which is fantastic. We got we jettisoned Relay's old newsletter technology. Like we just do it all memberful now. Yeah, uh, and it really is a fantastic platform. Uh, but one thing I appreciate, uh, and kind of going back to the way that you practice law for a second, I appreciate when I feel like I am a partner in something that I really rely on, and I, and I feel like I have that with memberful. I put you in contact with them as well. And they want to make the best product they can for people like you and me with businesses like ours. And so I was yeah. pleased that you went that route. And uh, and it does give you all this ability to to do these things all kind of under one umbrella, which is nice. You don't want to be stringing a bunch of stuff together. Yeah, agreed. And um, and I'm really looking forward to using those toys to you know give the the labs members you know, some bang for their buck. And yeah. uh, so that was a big thing. Yeah. You know, doing a website transition was, you know, in the midst of all this was kind of exciting, but in that case I hired somebody, you know, I mean the, uh, I could have made the transition to WordPress by myself, but it would have taken way too much time and I would have been bad at it. And sometimes you just throw money at the problem. And I did that in this case. Um, so we got the transition done and everything is working. I actually was not um, eager to leave Squarespace. I really like Squarespace and I'm not saying that because they're a sponsor. I think that for most people and most businesses, it is perfect. It doesn't cost a ton of money. It works. You know, they do the server, everything. Just You know, it's been a great experience for me, but I just kind of got with some of this weird stuff I'm doing. I just needed these extra tools. And I am paying through the nose for it. I mean, I paid <laughs> between uh, paying for a year of WordPress server and paying for the transition. I mean, I could have bought like over 10 years worth of, you know, Squarespace. You <laughs> yeah. Know, so that's how it goes sometimes. 
Yeah. So, so, it, but either way I did that and it, it came out good and everything worked and we had a couple of hiccups, but it all got sorted out and, and that is done. And, um, so that was kind of exciting getting all that done, getting the new logo done, um, which I did myself with Steven's help and some other people, but I made this cool logo. I didn't want it to just be the Mac because I cover more than the Mac. I cover all mm-hmm. the Apple stuff. And so the new logo is like the, the idea behind it. It's like the bolt for Mac Sparky and then it's got the ring around it, like the power button on the Mac, which yeah. uh, st- w- was Steven's idea, guys. I want to give full credit for that. Oh, man. And then, you, yeah. look, I, you know, some people are going to think, well, Steven's logo on 512 is a two dimensional Mac. And David always had the three dimensional Mac. He just wanted, he wanted the Mac logo space back. It was not it. Yeah. I promise. Yeah. It was not, yeah, well, there you it, was, go. it was not reverse psychology around your logo. Yeah. <laughs> But then I have different versions, like the 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 Max Sparky Labs logo is the same thing with the Apple six colors behind it, which is cool. And um, so I, it's just it's been really fun, kind of like being able to focus on stuff like that. Um, I am definitely going to be making more videos. I mean, that's one of the things I've wanted to do for years, but I never, but I never seem to find time. So uh, that means there'll be more free videos on YouTube, more free webinars, but there'll be more videos for the labs members too. And so I've been making some tiny little upgrades to the studio to accommodate that. Um, um, I bought a new set of light panels. I had a ring light and I always bugged me that like if it showed up at all, you could absolutely tell it was a ring light. Yeah, you get like the bug eye effect. Yeah, in your eye. yeah. it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't a very good one. It didn't have like a color temperature adjustment on it. So, and I, I kept it. I mean, I'm sure I'll find a use for it, but I got some, some better lighting, spent a couple hundred bucks on Amazon on some, some led panels that I think will make my lighting better, but I'm also kind of like making little uh, changes to the studio. The labs members are going to find out that I bought the coolest thing. Uh, my, uh, my big present to myself, I bought a little, um, like, panel that looks just like the ones they have on the walls in Batu. You know, there's a guy on Etsy <laughs> that made one and and he put LEDs in it with a little battery so it lights up. I'm going to be hanging that in the studio. I'm going to do that in this in the labs. I got to figure out where it goes. I'm going to I'm going to rely on the labs members for this one, but I can't wait to get that thing hung. And like I'm just going to kind of make it my own. And that, now that it's not doubling as a law office, I can go a little crazy, right? So um, I'm going to do that and, uh, I'm having fun doing that. Um, and I've been spending a lot of time working on, you know, what, uh, what is the new content? And like I said, I, I really am trying not to go crazy here. I mean, the Max Barkey lab stuff is stuff I'm really already doing, but I'm going to start documenting and sharing it more. And I want to, I have several field guides that I want to get out of my system. And so, I expect I'll be doing some more of those this year than usual and I'm just making Mac power users. Awesome. I mean, that's kind of the, the goal here. Yeah. I love it, man. And I think these technology changes, the investments you're making, uh, are, are good. I mean, it, when you are looking to up your game, uh, it does take some of those, uh, you know, some of those investments. Uh, I, I mean, look, I'm sitting in one <laughs> we spoke about two episodes ago, uh, so, so I oh, get wait, it. Wait, 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 what are you talking about? The pod cabin. Oh yes. Yes. Okay. I thought you got a new chair. Sorry. No, no, no. Like a, a float. I'm in a floating, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the tank that dipped Luke Skywalker in? You know, one of those. Yeah. The back to tank. Thank you. I knew it started with a B, but I didn't want to get it. There, wrong. there you go. Well, Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm of a certain age. Let's just, I'll just leave it at that. There you go. Uh, so you've made this big decision kind of building a roadmap, building a membership program. Uh, You know, what's your, what's your goal in all this? Say that we check in in a year or in whatever, uh, you know, what are the the metrics that you'll be looking at? What are the the feelings you want to be having about this change in the future? Well, obviously the last few months I've been doing a lot of thinking about all of this and what it means. I mean, like in the short term, I think this is an easy win. I think Max Barkey uh, is a, is something good that helps people. And I think I can make money on it at least in the short term. And when people ask me like, well, what's your goal? You know, how many, how many units do you want to sell or how many followers do you want or whatever? And, and the more I think about it, I don't think that's the right way to think about this. I mean, uh, you and I are in a very, very lucky 
privileged few that we get to talk about this and we have enough of a voice about it that people want to listen to it. And yeah. Amen. <laughs> I, I just don't think, and, and there is a degree of merit in that. I mean, I think both you and I make good content, but I also, I also absolutely believe there's a lot of luck involved. I mean, I happen to be in the right place at the right time and I was willing to take a shot at this. And, um, there are many people out there that didn't get that degree of luck for whatever reason and didn't get the audience and the ability to do something like this. So um, I think for me, the metric of success, the more I think about it, I realized came to the realization that it's not a number or sales or anything. For me, the degree of, uh, of success on this is relevance. I mean, my goal in doing this is to be relevant as Max Barkey in 10 years, you know, I still want to make stuff that people want in 10 years. And I don't know what that means. You know, mm-hmm. maybe it's like going to be, you know, head, headset retina screencast or whatever. I mean, I've just got to be willing to keep an eye on things and, and evolve. Yeah. And, um, and that's the reason why I threw the, uh, ultimately the law practice overboard is I want to have enough time to make Max Barkey relevant, not just for the next two years, but for the next, you know, 10 or 20 years. Yeah. And the only way I can do that is to go all in. Agreed. And, yeah. and if I uh, hadn't done that, if I had tried to keep, you know, riding two horses and Max Barkey, you know, drifted into uh, you know, obscurity because of that, I would have never forgiven myself. So success for me is relevance over the long term. It, that's such like a finicky weird thing to put your hands around the idea of of relevance in our space. And you know, I think I joked about it on the State of Apple episode but like is it the AR or the VR or the car? Like is there going to be a thing coming that I look at and think I just don't get it, you know. Uh, yeah. I hope not. I hope that I can stay agile and flexible in my thoughts and opinions on things, but that I have found that to be much easier over the last six years than the six years before that, where I was just writing five, 12 pixels and doing like podcasts on the side. Like when you can be fully steeped in it, the keeping up with what's coming, understanding your feelings and opinions on it. Like I have found that actually gets easier over time. So I think in the, the long term discussion of keeping Max Sparky, keeping the shows relevant, keeping them interesting, keeping them entertaining, that, I think comes naturally when you have more time to, uh, to pour into it. Yeah. And, and I had a couple of people along the way tell me, cause I, you know, I've, this is in my little circle. This has not been a secret. I've, I've told several, you know, many people that I've been planning this now for the last few months and a couple told me, Hey, you should not do video because you know, your hair is turning gray and people are going to look at you and think you're an old man and not care. And I thought that's not, I just don't believe that, you know, I mean, so when I hit 50, my hair decided to start turning gray, but that doesn't mean that I'm not relevant to the stuff, you mm-hmm. know? And I think it really, especially in our little world, it really is a meritocracy. And if you can bring good content, that's what people want. They don't care if your hair's gray, you know? And, um, so I don't, I just disagree with that, but the, um, but that's the goal for me is I, you know, the, the purpose for all of this is to have fun and make a living, but also, you know, to bring good content to the world that helps people, you know, with refugees in Africa or helps them just get their email done so they can get home and go to their kids play and not feel guilty. You know, I mean, it it runs the gamut, but you know, Apple plus productivity is the goal here. And I want to, I want to put the pedal down on that 100%. Well, count me in buddy. (laughs) Thank you. I I didn't expect you to become my first subscriber and it makes me feel just really warm. Good. I'm glad I'm I'm glad no one else beat me to it. Um, I've known that URL for a while. I should have done it sooner, but I wanted to do it on the show. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Oh man. Well, just dude, congratulations. Um, thanks as your friend. I'm excited as your partner in the show. I'm excited. It's just, it's the best way we could start the year off together. I think. Yeah, you know the funny thing is when I did the first move when I quit my job and started the practice, I had so many second thoughts and fears. I mean, uh, I turned so many friends into therapists for 
several months as I went through that. And I have not had that experience here. I mean, once I made the decision, I lit the ships on fire and got to work. Yeah. And I really haven't given it many second thoughts. And this could all blow up in my face. I could, you know, I could find my my plane crashing without a parachute, but I don't think it will. And if no. it does, I'll figure it out. But um, uh, I don't think I would, uh, you know, I also don't think I would have ever forgiven myself if I didn't take the shot. So here I am. Oh, <sighs> well. Sparky freedom indeed, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, man, let's wrap this up. How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah, man. I've been looking forward to having this conversation with the audience for a long time. So if you're still listening, thank you for, for letting me get through all that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been, it's been on the calendar for a while and it's so exciting to do it. And you know, now, now, you know why David moved his website and why this came out lots of little things we had to get just right. But, um, I'm glad it's here and I, I just, I can't wait to see what you do with it. And I, I just want to thank you. Um, you, you are one of my dearest friends and you have been such a, a rock for me as I went through this decision and giving me advice and tips and I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Of course we're in the, we're in the boat together. If you want to learn more about my big switch on the episode of Focus dropping tomorrow at Relay.fm slash Focus, uh, Mike and I are going to get into kind of the focus elements of this decision and how I made it. So if you want to even go further down a rabbit hole, you can do that. But in the meantime, we are the Mac Power Users. You can find us at Relay.fm slash Mac Power Users. Thank you to our sponsors, 1Password, Squarespace, and FitBot. On more Power Users today, we're going to talk about some changes Stephen is making. I'm not the only one throwing things overboard. So uh, join more Power Users and learn about that. And otherwise, we'll see you next week.